everyone, it's Sevi. Are you here because you tried to get the Jade Cutter but got shafted by Kagura's Verity instead? Or maybe you got it for your Yae and are curious if it's compatible with other Catalyst users? Or maybe you're just curious to learn more about our new 5-star Catalyst? Well, whatever the reason, I'm glad you're here. This video has two main sections. First, I'll be analyzing how the weapon synergizes with other characters besides Yai. And second, I'll be showing you a practical damage test comparison on Ningguang with Kagura's Verity versus its other 5-star Catalyst competitors. At the end, I'll give you my overall thoughts on what I think about the new weapon. Let's get started. The Kagura's Verity is finally our first 5-star crit damage catalyst. It's level 90, 608 base attack, and 66.2% crit damage main stats make it a sort of mirror of the Lost Prayers catalyst, which has the exact same attack and crit value stats. But the effect is of course different, so let's break it down. You have to cast the elemental skill, not deal damage, to get the Kagura stack adding a 12% skill damage bonus. This stack lasts for 16 seconds and stays even if you're off field, as long as you can cast your skill before the stack duration ends, even if it's 15 seconds in already, the duration refreshes once more to another 16 seconds. Then getting max stacks adds another 12% elemental damage bonus on top. Once you've reached that point, it's just a matter of sustaining that buff throughout the entire battle. While the effect isn't necessary to make use of it, not utilizing its stacking effect of course doesn't let you achieve its full potential. And to do that, the character just needs to have a skill cooldown that is short enough to cover the stacking duration. Additionally, it's better if their skill damage contributes a decent enough portion of their total DPS output. So among all our Catalyst users, who can make use of its stacking effect? Let's take a look at them one by one. Barbara, no. Her skill cooldown is 32 seconds and its damage is negligible anyway. How about Klee? Yes. Her skill has two charges, each with 20 second cooldowns. You can't cast them right after one another though, as that won't give you enough time to trigger the last stack. So the first charge and second charge need to have 5 seconds apart or more between use for the third skill cast to refresh the stack duration in time. This will take at least 20 seconds to get max stacks. With Lisa, yes, her tap skill only has a 1 second cooldown, so you can build the max stacks quickly enough. It's a good weapon if you're playing a main DPS Lisa with lots of field time, but if you're playing a quick swap Lisa, trying to build all of Kagura's stacks could get in the way of your team's rotation. But if you're not concerned with that, there are hardly any drawbacks here. Mona, yes, technically she can max the stack since her skill has a 12 second cooldown. This means it will take at least 24 seconds for full stacks and skill damage is a small portion of her DPS anyway. With Ningguang, yes, at C0, her skill has a 12 second cooldown. It will take at least 24 seconds that way to get full stacks. But her C2 adds an instant cooldown mechanic to her skill. With C2, my current fastest method is at least 10 seconds. Here's how it goes. Cast a skill on a large boss or object so that it gets destroyed immediately. This refreshes the cooldown. Cast it again, this time ensure that it's intact. Wait for 6 seconds before casting your burst which destroys it again. By this time, your C2 effect should come into effect already. Then just recast it and voila, max stacks. Well, either that or just keep casting it in the open world before you start a battle. For Kakomi, no. I mean, aside from it being a crit damage weapon, her skill cooldown is 20 seconds. What about Sucrose? Yes, technically, since her skill has a 15 second cooldown and two charges at C1. It will take at least 15 seconds for full stacks, but it can be faster with C4 if you use her normal and charged attacks to shorten the cooldown. However, her skill is meant for reactions, so unless it's a very rare carry build Sucrose, you wouldn't really put this on her anyway. Yae Miko, yes of course, it's Yae's best in slot. Highly complements her turret gameplay and you can get all stacks in just 2-3 seconds. For Yanfei, yes, her skill has a 9 second cooldown and it will take at least 18 seconds for full stacks, but her skill damage is a small portion of her DPS anyway. So that's how Kagura's Verity works on different characters. For some, it's okay and at the very least, a stat stick. But despite being a 5 star weapon, it's worth noting that other 4 stars can still compete against or outclass Verity depending on refinements, battle circumstances, and who you're comparing it for. For example, R5 with Sis for Burst Mona will still be a better choice versus an R1 Verity. 
Now for the second part of my video, I chose Ning Wang who was one of the characters able to efficiently utilize the weapon's passive to do a practical damage test versus other 5 star catalysts. The contenders are Kagura's Verity vs Skyward Atlas, Memory of Dust, and Lost Prayers. Here are important testing notes, if you're not interested in these feel free to skip towards the actual test timestamp. The punching bag is Magu Kenki. At the end of the tests, I'll compile both non-crit and crit damage numbers. For party members, I included two top teammates for Ning Guang. There's Bennett with a level 90 Alley Flash and 4 piece Noblesse, and Zhongli for his shield, providing resistance shred equipped with a 2 piece Tenacity, 2 piece Noblesse build, so no 4 piece Tenacity effects are at play. Geo Resonance is then activated, and Zhongli's shield will be on at all times. Ning Guang is at level 90 with talents 8, 11, 12. Her crit stats are 61% and 154%. The crit damage increases to 220% with Kagura's Verity. It's important to note that my Ning Guang build is 2 piece Noblesse, 2 piece Glad. Given Bennett's attack buff plus Memory of Dust and Skyward's attack scaling, this build suffers a bit from diminishing returns compared to having the Archaic Petra's 15% Geo damage bonus, which I unfortunately don't have a setup, so keep that in mind. With the weapons, here are some conditions to note. For the Skyward Atlas, it has a damage over time mechanic that I'll also indicate, but it's pretty much plug and play. For Memory of Dust, I ensured that all stacks have been gained with a shield on for the highest damage ceiling. For Lost Prayers, consider that it has a damage bonus increase over time, but in practical use, it's very rare to get beyond 2 stacks if you're doing proper rotations. Since Ningguang's crit rate for all other weapons is 61%, adding Lost Prayers turns this to 94%. You can just not rebalance it to get more consistent crits, but it also means you can build more crit damage on her. For reference, I'll include both the original damage and equalized crit damage values. And finally, for Kagura's Verity, I fully stacked it first before doing the damage test to see the max damage potential. All weapons are at level 90 and all are R1 except for the Lost Prayers which is at R3, but that only has about an average 2% damage increase overall compared to R1. With those in mind, here are the clips. We'll first start with Skyward Atlas and Memory of Dust side by side. Here are the damage numbers. As you can see, they're very, very close. Then for the next pair, we'll compare Lost Prayers and Kagura's Verity side by side. And here are the damage numbers. Let's compare them all together. So what are my observations and findings? Well, Kagura's Verity has the highest skill damage potential, as expected from its skill damage buff. But comparing Ningguang's different damage sources to other weapons, the Kagura's overall damage difference is very negligible. Lost Prayers and Kagura's Verity yielded slightly higher crit numbers, but Skyward and Memory have slightly higher non-crit damage. My results may be different from yours depending on the artifacts and stats, but Kagura's Verity isn't much of an upgrade to the existing catalysts for Ningguang, which is also likely true for most other DPS catalyst users too, except maybe for Yae. Rather, it's more like a side grade. Kagura vs Lost Prayers are almost the same in practical use due to them having the same base attack and crit value, and both make it much easier to build around your crit stats compared to the attack percent weapons. Kagura has a ramp up period which has some workarounds depending on the character. Lost Prayers has a ramp up time too, but unless its user stays on field long enough to get all of them, it won't even be utilized and the stacks reset when you switch out, so that's one advantage of the Verity. All in all, I think the surprisingly biggest pro of Kagura's Verity on Ningguang is that it actually looks good with her new skin. Anyway, that's it for my discussion and testing on Kagura's Verity. Being the first crit damage catalyst makes it look appealing, but if you already have other 5 star catalysts or even certain high refinement 4 stars like Solar Pearl or Widsith, Kagura's Verity is more like a side grade. The passive effect in particular is a bit niche and requires you to play around it if the user isn't fully compatible with its mechanics. Still, if you manage to accidentally get it and you don't have any other 5 star catalyst, or if it's an extra catalyst you've been hunting for, then at least it can be as good as them. 
That's going to be all for this video everyone. If you pulled Kagura's Verity or are looking forward to it, comment down below what you think of it so far. I would love to know. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!